I've done several videos on how to control Kato turnouts with an Arduino, but you guys have been asking me about snap switches and tortoise switch motors and how to control those with an Arduino. Well, guess what? We're doing that today. This video is brought to you with support from my patrons on Patreon. These videos would not be possible without them. And if you'd like to join the Patreon community, you can follow the link in the description below and join for as little as $1 a month. These two switch motors are some of the most common that are out there for model railroading and various manufacturers make them. This is an Atlas HO scale switch motor for code 100 track. And this is a tortoise slow motion switch machine by Circuitron. It works with several different scales. These motors each have their benefits and drawbacks. Typically snap switches are the kind that you will see installed on a turnout from the factory when you buy them as remote controlled. And they are pretty easy to install, but they are fairly unrealistic with that snapping motion. Tortoise, on the other hand, is more expensive and you're going to have to do more work to install them, but they use lower power and they are more prototypical. If you want to be able to control both of these, or if you have both of these on the layout, this is everything you're going to need to be able to control these. And I'll have the complete part list right here. Let's talk about the snap motor first. Now these work with a pair of coiled electromagnets that when charged will snap the mechanism one way or the other, depending on which coil is charged. And it is a snapping motion, hence the name snap switch. Now the three screws here are the power connections. The middle one is a common ground and the ones on the sides are the power that go to each coiled electromagnet. Now we're going to use a relay to send power to the electromagnets. And since there are two electromagnets, we're going to need two relays. Here is a complete list of all the parts you're going to need to wire up one of these snap motors to be controlled by an Arduino. We're going to be using 12 volt DC power to power the snap switches. And the first thing we need to do is connect the common ground or the middle screw of the snap switch directly to our barrel plug adapter where our DC power supply will connect. It's important to note that you make sure you connect to the negative terminal on that barrel plug. Now, if you're thinking of implementing this on a mass scale, no, you do not need a 12 volt power supply for each turnout. You can simply daisy chain or distribute the power to the relays. Now you will need two relays per turnout motor. Now, relays have three pins per relay. One is the center where everything comes from. One is normally closed, which is what you see where the little angled line is. And then one is normally open with the gap in between it. And we're going to be connecting our wires from the turnout motor to the normally open side. Now I kind of did this out of order, but you're going to want to connect the positive side from the barrel plug adapter to the middle pins of the relays. Now I'm doing this by simply daisy chaining. So we're going to connect it to that middle pin of that first relay. And then we're going to make a little jumper over to the second relays middle pin. Next up, we're going to connect our other connection from the second relays normally open position, which is the right hand terminal. And we're going to connect it to the other screw terminal on the snap switch motor. Now it's time to bring in the controls. The snap switch is wired and ready to go, but we need to wire up the Arduino to control it. Now the first thing I need to do is break out the power from the power pins into the breadboards bus. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect the ground pins to the blue lines on the breadboard, and then I'm gonna connect my five volt to the red lines on the breadboard.
we're going to wire up a momentary push button to control the snap switch. And these are fairly easy to wire up, but I will have a schematic of these entire projects in the description below. So the first thing we need to do is we're going to connect the five volt power to the button, which it comes in through the red wire. And then the black wire is gonna be our ground. And we need to split that off. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to use a 20K resistor to jump from that black wire to our ground connection and then that's going to be just our regular ground connection and it's going to give us enough resistance to be able to read the button. Then we're going to take another wire and go from that black wire directly into digital or analog pin A0. And once we've done that, we have completely wired up the button. You can see where I just kind of moved the uh, red directly on to the 5 volt red line on the breadboard. You don't need to have another jumper. so. The button is basically connected red 5 volt to black is split off between going to A0 and then going to the ground connection with a 20K resistor. The last thing that I need to do is to bring power to the relays, which they just have a simple 5 volt and ground connection on each side of them right there. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and connect our control pins. And sorry for my fat fingers, but we are connecting it to digital pins three and four and connecting those to relays one and two, which are the only other two pins available on the relay. So again, I have a schematic below because I have really big fingers and sometimes it's just hard to get them out of the way of the camera. So that is the entire build for this. Let's go ahead and hop into the Arduino IDE and write some code. All right, everyone, so we're in our Arduino IDE and I have the original Kato turnout sketch right here. And all we have to do is a few modifications for the wiring we've done. and. It's gonna be pretty simple to change. So if you want this original sketch, I have it. Uh, I will put a link to it for the Kato turnouts. I've also got that video linked at the end of this video, but let's go ahead and do some modifications. First, obviously, uh, we need to change our pins. So that's gonna be pin three and pin four. And then we also need to look and see if there's anything else. It has a one, so we're just gonna change that to a zero. And then we're also gonna scroll on down here and make sure that there is nothing else different okay so we start off with the changes and making them in void switch off so you'll scroll down to that and then you're gonna switch the switch pins from low to high pretty simple this will just make them be turned off when they're in that state everything else is the same right here next thing we need to do is we need to go to void switch straight which is directly below the switch off and we just need to add a few things so we're gonna go I'm actually just gonna copy the digital right right here the digital high and low you don't need to mess with that and then you press enter and go below the delay 500 and then I'm just gonna type that in and we're gonna change the low to high and that will turn it back off so basically that's gonna power that particular electromagnetic for half a second and then turn it off I'm just gonna copy paste that. We're gonna go down to switch turn and we're going to paste that right there. So this one, delay 500 right there. Let's go ahead and check it out. And we are ready to upload. All right, here's the moment of truth. Let's just make sure that it works and it snaps. You can see I have the 12 volt power supply hooked up to the barrel plug adapter. Let's hit it. And you can see it snaps back and forth. You can also see the little lights going on on the relay because it's briefly um, opening those circuits and closing them back. And there you go. Our next motor is a tortoise switch motor or a slow motion switch machine. Now, I do want to explain how this works because if you're a beginner, you may have never even heard of one of these. Basically what it is, it's designed to be mounted underneath your track, underneath your layout, and then have this little pin that goes through and goes and controls the turnout through a slow motion stall motor that goes from here and then it goes back and forth. And you can adjust 
the distance of your throw, depending on your scale and your turnout, by moving this little thing right here. And it has all of its electrical connections right here. A couple reasons why you might want this on your layout. Number one, it keeps your motor completely out of your scenery. Now you can get snap motors that mount underneath the layout, but a lot of people when they go under layout will opt for something like this. And the other reason is that it throws the turnouts a lot more slowly and a lot more prototypically. It's also a lot quieter than a snap motor, which has that loud snap snapping sound. We will be using an L298N motor driver to control the tortoise switch motor. The first thing that we need to do is connect power to the motor driver and it has these little terminals right here so I'll connect my 12 volt power there. One thing that I forgot to do here that I did later was you need to connect a ground pin from the Arduino to the ground terminal on the L298N motor driver. Next, we're going to take those control pins from the Arduino that we already had wired up for the snap switch, and we're just going to connect digital pins 3 and 4 to pins 1 and 2 on the motor driver. We're not messing with the button setup. It is exactly the same as what we did with the snap switch. Now it's time to connect up the tortoise, and you can see that it has eight different pads for soldering and attaching wires. We're only gonna worry about wire number one and wire number eight, because those are the only two that connect to the motor itself, so the ones on the edges. And the rest of them are used to control all sorts of different accessories that you can add to these things, but we're just gonna wire those two up. So what we need to do is we need to take terminals one and two from the motor driver and connect them to pads one and eight on the tortoise. Now, I will tell you that these things are a little finicky, so when you do do the install, you're definitely gonna want to solder your connections in place. That'll make them solid and bulletproof. And there you go, you can see that we have it all wired up. Let's go do some recoding. Okay, we're back to the Kato sketch. I've already done the changes for the switch pin one, switch pin two, three, four, and then button A zero. But if you thought the changes to make this work with the snap switch was easy, the ones to make it work with a tortoise are even easier. So both the tortoise and the Kato uh, turnout use the same device to control them. They use a motor driver. In this case, I'm using the L298N motor driver. So all I have to do is just modify what I am am using here and it should be pretty easy to do so it takes about two seconds for that throw to go so all we're going to do is we're just going to scroll down to void switch straight and we're just going to change the 500 delay to 2000 and we're going to go to turn and we're going to change that to 2000 and that's it that's the whole thing we'll go ahead and check it and there we are, we are completely good to go. All right, let's give this thing a test. And you can see it works. And you can see it takes about two seconds for that motor to traverse that distance. People throw turnouts a lot of different ways. There are still a ton of people who prefer throwing their turnouts manually. It's part of their operations and part of how they enjoy their railroad. But if you have a turnout that is hard to reach to throw manually, or you just want that control of the push of a button to throw your turnouts, turnout motors are a great solution for that. So it all comes down to what you want. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Remember, it's American Heart Month. I'm supporting Heart 4 PCOS. You can check out the link in the description below for for more info. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Stay safe, be kind, and happy railroading. We're gonna do that today. If I don't break the switch motor. I have done quite a few oh. control things such as the actual motor itself as well as electri elect that